Happy Mother's Day, everyone. And I'm going to read you all this story. It's called Paddington and the Garden. In the story. One morning, Paddington went out into the garden and began making a list of all the nice things he could think of about being a bear and living with the Browns. He had a room of his own and a warm bed to sleep in, and he had marmalade for breakfast every morning. In darkest Peru, he had only been allowed to have it on Sundays. The list was soon so long, he had nearly run out of paper. Before he realized, he had left out one of the nicest things of all. Hmm. The garden itself. I didn't like the Browns' garden. Apart from the occasional noise from a nearby building site, it was so quiet and peaceful, it didn't seem like being in London at all. But nice gardens don't just happen. They usually required a lot of hard work, and the one at number 32 Windsor Garden was no exception. Mr. Brown had to mow the lawn twice a week. And Miss Brown was kept busy weeding the flower beds. There was always something to do. Even Mrs. Bird lent a hand whenever she had a spare moment. It was Mrs. Bird who first suggested giving Jonathan, Judy, and Paddington each a piece of the garden. It will keep certain bears out of mischief, she said meaningly, and it will be fun for Jonathan and Judy as well. Mr. Brown agreed it was a very good idea, and he marked out three plots at the far end of the lawn. Paddington was most excited. I don't suppose there are many bears who have their own garden, he exclaimed. Early the next morning, all three set to work. Judy decided to make a flower bed, and Jonathan had his eye on some old paving stones. Hayden didn't know what to do. In the past, he had often found that garden gardening was much harder than it looked, especially when you only had paws. In the end, armed with a jar of Miss Bird's homemade marmalade, he borrowed Mr. Brown's wheelbarrow and set off to look for ideas. His first stop was a stall in the market, where he bought a book called How to Plan Your Garden by Leonid Trug. It came complete with a large packet of assorted seeds, and if the picture on the front cover was anything to go by, it was no wonder Mr. Trug looked happy, for he seemed to do most of his planning while lying in a hammock. By the end of the book, without lifting a finger, he was surrounded by blooms. Pennington decided it was a very good value indeed, especially when the owner of the stall gave him two hands change. Mr. Strug's book was full of useful hints and tips. The first one suggested that before starting work, it was a good idea to close your eyes and try to picture what the garden would look like when it was finished. Having walked into a lamppost by mistake, Paddington decided to read another page or two 
and there he found a much better idea. Mr. Trug advised standing back and looking at the site from a safe distance, preferably somewhere high up. Painter knew just the spot. By the time Penny Den reached the building site near the Brown's house, it meant, sorry, it was the middle of the morning, and the men were all on their tea break, placing his jar of marmalade on a wooden platform for safekeeping. He sat on a pile of bricks for a rest while he considered the matter. There was no one about, and there was a ladder nearby. Mr. Trug was quite right. The Brown's garden did look very different from high, from high up. But before he had time to get his breath back, Pennington heard the sound of an engine starting up. He peered through a gap in the board. As he did, Pennington saw a building out. On the ground just below him, a man was emptying a load of concrete on the very spot where he had left his jar of marmalade. Brandon scrambled back down the ladder as fast as his legs would carry him, reaching the bottom just as the forearm came around the corner. Is anything wrong? asked the man. You look upset. My jar's been buried, exclaimed Huntington, hotly pointing to the pile of concrete. It had some of Miss Bird's best golden chunks in it, too. I won't ask no jar. Sorry, I won't ask how your jar got there, said the war man, turning to Huntington as his men set to work clearing the concrete into small piles or what you were doing up the ladder. I'm glad of that, said Pennington politely, raising his hat. Suddenly, there was a whirring sound from somewhere Overhead, to Pennington's surprise, the platform landed at his feet. My marmalade, he exclaimed thankfully. Your marmalade? repeated the foreman, staring jar. Did you say marmalade? That's right, said Pennington. I put it there ready for my elevenesses. elevenses. It must have been taken up by mistake. Now the tops come off. It was the foreman's turn to look as though he could hardly believe his eyes. That special quick drawing cement, he wailed, it's probably rock hard already ruined by bear's marmalade. No one will give me two pens for it now. I will, said Pennington eagerly. I had an idea. Pennington was busy for the rest of the week when the builders when the builders saw the rock garden had made 
they were most impressed and the foreman even gave him some plants to finish it off until his seeds started to grow it is national garden day on saturday he said there are some very famous people in philadelphia i'll spread the word around you never know your luck The foreman was a good as his word, and on Saturday, half the neighborhood turned up at number 32 Windsor Garden to see the judges arrive. Arrington nearly fell over backwards, was surprised when he discovered that no less a person than Mr. Lionel Trug himself was leading the procession. It is very good of you to get out of your hammock, Mr. Trug, he exclaimed. <laughs> er, not at all, said Leonard Trug. My pleasure, I must say, I love your orange stones. Where did you find them? I didn't, said Bennington. I think they found me, thanks to the builders. Congratulations, said Mr. Trug as he handed Huntington a gold star. It is good to see a young bear taking a gardening. I hope you will be the first of many who would have believed it. Hmm. Taking a gardening. <clears throat> said Mr. Brown, as the last of the crown departed, you must write and tell Aunt Lucy all about it, said Miss Bird. They'll be very excited in the home for retired bears when they hear the news. Bennington thought that was a good idea but he had something to do first. He wanted to add one more important item to his list of all the nice things there were about being a bear and living with the Browns, having my own rock garden. Then he signed his name and added his special palm print. Just to show it was... The end. Well, it was a good story. Bennington loves gardening. Maybe people get ideas of how to garden. Gardening is really beautiful. You get to have your fresh fruits and vegetables grow. And it helps you relax. It helps you with your stress, your problems to avoid. Gardening is, it helps us a lot. That is right. Even when Pennington wanted to learn how to garden on his own, well, yeah, you're right, Mr. Snail. But it's true, he did not give up on his own. He had everyone around him. Well, yeah, he did. That's a good thing, you always have everyone around you. Because they believe in you. That is true. And you should all you will always never be alone, boys and girls. You will never be alone because we're always loving you. And happy Mother's Day to all your moms. We love them all. Bye. Yep. Happy Mother's Day. A todos los, los mamás. Que Dios les bendiga y Dios les cuide. I'm going to sing a happy birthday song to everyone born the month of May. And happy Mother's Day to all of y'all.
Mother's Day. Happy birthday to all of you. Yeah, I mean, I'll be good at it, but heck, I just want to bite all of you guys' day from the bottom of my heart because I love y'all. Let's get out that door, okay? Happy Mother's Day. Dios los bendiga, Dios los acompañe. Me, God, will guide you guys all. God loves you all very much. And always remember, boys and girls, you gotta love your mom, your aunts, your grandmas. Give them lots of hugs, warm kisses. You gotta love them. Yeah, they're always there for you. Okay? Happy Mother's Day, y'all. Stay safe and stay strong and stay healthy. Bye-bye.